privacy as a concern for consumers is also something that may not translate as the app goes global. In a country where mass surveillance, both on the streets and online, is commonplace, it's safe to assume that applies to the data collected by TikTok. And if you have any doubts, just take a look at TikTok's terms and conditions. TikTok requires the user to accept um, a huge number of permissions. Now, a lot of those permissions on your phone make sense. It's a video sharing app, so of course it wants access to your camera. But there are other permissions that it requires that are a little more puzzling. So for example, permission to access um, your location data on your phone, the GPS coordinates of where you are. And when you look at how the app works, that doesn't seem to make a huge amount of sense because there's nothing in the app that indicates where you're located makes any difference over how you use the app or how the app responds to you. So a lot of that data is being vacuumed up by TikTok. And the concern is that that data is being sent back to Beijing. Now, TikTok um, has said that the data is being stored in Singapore and the United States and is not stored in Beijing. But that does not mean that Beijing-based engineers are not accessing that data in order to make the app better. Now, the reason why that is a worry is because in China, there is a whole suite of um, national security laws that, um, that say if you are an individual or a company, you have to um, cooperate with the authorities on intelligence gathering work. So there is no firewall between these companies and the data they hold and the Chinese authorities. So that means that this data all of this data that this app is collecting could be used by Chinese intelligence services. And, you know, the data that these apps collect, it really paints a very, very vivid picture of um, everyday people's lives. What you do every day, what time you wake up, where you go, who you talk to. This is very, very valuable information for foreign intelligence services. Ryan says it doesn't just stop there. It really is an AI company. It is. It puts a lot of emphasis on the data collection it does and how it crunches that data. So it's not just looking at what hashtags you use. It's looking at your face. It is analyzing your, your face and feeding that into a facial recognition algorithm. They may even at some stage know what you're going to look like. You know, if you apply these filters to your face, it can, it can figure out what you're going to look like when you're an older person. So if um, authorities in Beijing have access to that data, then they're able to do the same thing that um, advertisers on the, on the product are doing and really hone down to understanding a huge amount of information about people of interest to them. Now, why would this matter to an average American teenager filming a dance to Doja Cat's Say So? Maybe right now they're teenagers and they're just um, putting up funny content on TikTok. But that data, if it is being stored and accessed by foreign governments, then that can be easily accessed once this person does go on to have an internship at the White House or go and work at Congress. If, if they work in the government, if they work for the military, if they work in sensitive parts of the economy. It's something TikTok users may want to keep in mind the next time they record themselves doing the renegade. If we're worried about the kind of data and the capabilities that these companies have now, just use your imagination to think where is this technology going in the, in the next two years, in the next five years? What is this technology going to be capable of doing? We have to think ahead to that, to that possibility.